today we are going to dive into um, the truth about abortion, um, its evil nature, and just how wicked it is. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and also turn on your notifications. Let's get right into this. This is the podcast, Mia Seeks Truth, and we are going to just dive right into abortion because many Christians, many Christians believe that it's okay. It's not bad. You know, women get attacked, they get raped. So in that case, it's okay to abort a baby. But I'm here to tell you that it's not okay. Um, so we are going to just look at some facts, some statistics, and um, the Bible, what God has to say about this. So I'm pretty sure you noticed I cut my hair. Um, <laughs> I cut it almost a full week ago i'm just gonna plug in my laptop really quickly but um i like it you see the little design on the side got a little design both sides yes i chopped it off um just starting all over so this will be a fun adventure watching it grow back and um I'm pretty sure it's going to be down my neck by next year because my hair grows really fast. But anyway, just wanted to point that out because I know people are like, wait a minute, did she cut her hair? Like, what's going on with that? Yes, I chopped it off. But anyway, so let's get in right into this. Um, so the first part, I'm just going to read what's on the World Health Organization's website. If you don't know what that is, um, World Health Organization just basically collects data from around the world about health things um and they just give some facts on certain topics now i put facts because you know the only fact is really from the bible that's the only thing that i follow i don't really follow facts from the world because it's, a lot of times it's tainted so um i'm just going to read what they say um some true statistics and also just dive into um the bible so it states on their website abortion is a common health um intervention it is safe and it is to be carried out method used by who which is the world health organization um appropriate to the pregnancy duration by someone who has the necessary skills so remember that they said it's safe i'm trying to figure out safe for who um, because it's definitely not for the baby, um, but we'll keep going. So six out of 10 um, of unintended pregnancies and an induced abortion. And um, around 70% of abortions are unsafe, but those are in developing countries. So countries that I guess don't have enough funding, like medical funding and the equipment and all of that, but again, all abortion is unsafe. So we'll keep reading their website. Um, unsafe abortion is um, very preventable and it can cause um, maternal death and morbidities. It can lead to physical and mental health complications, social and financial burdens for women, communities and health system. Um, but even if you go through a safe abortion here in the US, it still leads to physical and mental health complications. So I'm kind of confused by that statement. That's not just for developing countries, that's for everyone. But okay, if you wanna spin it that way um, to try to say, oh, yes, don't do it yourself, but go to a medical professional, which I'm gonna get into the process of what they do in a medical setting. Um, but also, I just want to give this very alarming number um, about 73 million induced abortions take place worldwide each year. Do you know how many deaths that is? That's a lot. That's a lot. And that's each year. And about 61% is unintended pregnancy. So it's, oops, oops. Um, 
oops, I got pregnant. Let's murder the baby type of thing. Yes. Yes. Um, very alarming number. It's actually extremely high. Um, but let's look and focus more um, into the U.S. because that was worldwide. So that was a lot, right? So one out of four women has had an abortion at some point in their life. So that's about 25%. Um, and some have multiple. I, I um, used to work for a federal agency and working with women. And one lady came in to the office and I read her medical history, had seven. And she decided to keep the eighth child. And I'm like, seven abortions? Like, if you just understand the process of how abortions work and how that's crazy to me because there's a lot that can go wrong in abortions and there are a lot of things that happen afterwards that they don't tell you like effects that it has on the body so i'll get into the process of um how they do it in a second but i just wanted to point that out um that's a lot so people will say but what about rape victims okay well only 1.5 percent of abortions are due to rape and incest so it's both of those together equal that 1.5 but less than one percent is due to rape less than one percent so when people use that argument it's like it's less than one percent so you can't use that argument um and half of those people who get um raped half of the women that are raped keep the baby so let's throw that argument out the window okay because remember i read before it's 61 percent that was like oops i got pregnant type of thing it was totally unintentional like they didn't want it let's get rid of the baby type of thing so keep that in your mind more than half just don't want the baby it's not about rape it's less than one percent um, which is insane to me. And we should know this by now that Planned Parenthood is the nation's largest abortion provider. Uh, you could thank Margaret Sanger for that, who was definitely a racist, but also, um, she was just wicked. She was a wicked individual, um, definitely working for Satan and she wanted to kill babies. That was her mission. Um, like I said, she was racist, racist. She hated black people. She saw black people as being weeds, um, and needed to exterminate them. So she put a lot of the Planned Parenthoods in, um, urban areas where blacks lived. So you could imagine what the abortion rate is amongst, um, black people, but this is not a race issue. I'm just pointing this out. I'm not going to get all into detail of race and racism and all that because that's not what this video is about. This is just shining light on abortion itself and how wicked it is. So if this person intentionally built um, plant parenthoods in these areas to kill off black children, for example, what do you think overall abortion is about? Murdering babies. So... I don't want to hear that it's, oh, well, it's just, you know, it's not a big deal. Women get raped, so they should be able to, no, less than 1%. I don't want to hear that no more. A child's heartbeat at 21 days. That's eight to 10 weeks gestation. It's not a clump of cells. It's a human being that's growing. There's a heartbeat. So let's throw out that excuse too. Oh, it's not alive. It is. And we're going to read scripture um, that says otherwise as well. And 62% um, of people tend to get abortions during the 8 to 10 week gestation. But what's even crazier is this, this is just an example. I'm just going to use an example of one state in 2019. 
as of 2019, New York abortion law allows for abortions all the way up to full term. Wicked. That's straight wicked. That's like a whole, I mean, it's a baby inside of you at eight weeks too. Even when the cells, the sperm and the egg meets, it's a living, breathing thing at that point. But you have to be a real sick individual to have a baby kicking inside of you, moving around, eating, pooping, coughing, yawning, all that stuff inside of you. And then you go and murder it, murder the child. That's a sick individual to do that. It's, it's, it's all sick, but it's one thing when you don't even, you know, at eight weeks, you don't even see the baby. You don't feel it. Nothing. You just maybe be sick or whatever, but your stomach is big. Like you could physically see the child and you choose to murder it. And it's like, well, why not give the child up for adoption? Why do you have to go and murder the baby? It's wicked. It's straight wickedness. Um, that's how I feel about, um, abortion anyway, because it's like my body, my choice. Well, not really, because there's another human being inside of you. So it's no longer just your body. You made the decision when you had sex. Yeah. You made the decision to create a child when you had sex. Sex is for procreation. If you didn't want a child, maybe don't have sex. But we don't want to ha have that conversation because then it's like, oh, I want to do what I want. I want to have free sex. Free sex equal equals babies. That's just what happens. Because a lot of people don't like to use protection and all that stuff. So you know when you have unprotected sex, you're going to get a baby. But the Bible says that you should remain abstinent until marriage anyway, because otherwise free sex is fornicating. It's wicked. So you shouldn't be doing that anyway. So believers, Christians, hello, stop having sex outside of marriage because you're still sinning against God. So just saying, if you want to be blunt with this, like got to got to stop having sex that will solve this problem here um but i want to get into the process of like what they do so when you go into the doctor's office and especially if your baby um you know obviously the baby's growing inside of the mom so the doctor what they would do they would take like these forceps they're like these big utensils that have teeth on it and they clamp, they have little pinchers. And it's so sad to talk about because I've seen many videos on this and it's honestly, it's heartbreaking. But they go in and they clamp the baby's limbs and they rip it off one by one. The baby feels this because um, if you watch some videos and do research, you could see the baby twisting inside of the mom because it's in the baby's in pain. Um, so they take it limb by limb off legs, arms. Then they remove the stomach, the intestines, ripping it out of the mother. Finally, they get to the head. They take the head, they crush the skull. Cause that's the way that you could get it out is by crushing the skull and what lets the doctor know that they crushed it is that there's this fluid that comes out from the baby's skull. Sorry, this is very disturbing. And um, you can see pictures when you Google this online, aborted babies, but they'll have a tray and they will put the pieces of the baby, they'll like put the body together to make sure they got all the limbs and stuff. And that's why you'll see on, on Google images and stuff, the baby on the tray with their body all broken up in pieces because then the doctor will go and try to put the body together to make sure the pieces are all out. And then they take the scraper and then they scrape out all the remains, which that can't be good for the mom either because you shouldn't be scraping anything. Um, so when they say that it's safe, that's my question to who? How is abortion safe? 
you just murdered a baby in the most insane way possible ripping limbs off like the baby's nothing and let's ask the doctor can we rip the doctor's limbs off one by one oh well mia that's not humane hmm. interesting but it is for a baby okay but that's the process and that's what they do um they also do have abortion pills to take two if the baby's a lot smaller where it would just I don't know how the chemicals would just kill the baby and it would pass through the vagina so there's other ways but the most common way is the one that I mentioned and it's very sick very sick so I have a question and you can write this in the comments um, but I'm gonna answer it anyway is abortion demon worship is this really demonic well, we just heard the earthly side of things, which it's murder. So you should be able to answer that question and say, yes, it's demonic because you're breaking um, one of the Ten Commandments and it's thou shalt not murder, right? Abortion is murder. I don't care how you flip it, twist it. It's a clump of cells. It's not a clump of cells, okay? It's murder. Um, and it is also demon worship. So we're going to look at Leviticus 18.21. And you shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Now, who's Molech? Well, Molech is the demon. He's a demon of child sacrifice. Demon of abortion, child sacrifice is the same thing, okay? So when you abort your baby, you may not be passing it through the fire, but you're still murdering a baby. It's a sacrifice. Sacrifice to who? To this demon. Essentially, you are worshiping the devil when you are aborting a baby. Absolutely, you are worshiping the devil. You may not know it. You may not be intentionally doing it. Like, well, you're intentionally getting the abortion. But you may not be intentionally saying, oh, I'm going to worship the devil today. But that's what you're doing. Leviticus 20, 2 through 5. Again, you shall say to the children of Israel, whoever... The children of Israel or the strangers who dwell in Israel, who gives any descendants to Molech, he shall surely be put to death. God's not playing. He's serious about this. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from his people because he has given some of his descendants to Molech and defiled my sanctuary and profaned my name, my holy name. And if people of the land... Should any way hide their eyes from the man who gives his descendants to Molech and does not kill him, then I will set my face against that man and against the family and will cut him off from the people and all who prostitute themselves with him to commit um, whoredom with Molech. So this is what God is saying. You sacrifice your kid to this God in honor of this God, um, you're going to be killed because first of all, you should only worship the Lord your God, Lord God. That's it. You shouldn't be worshiping other go gods. And then now you're going to murder your descendants in honor to this demon? God's going to kill you. That's what it says in Leviticus. God said, stone him. And then anybody who turns a blind eye to it, so meaning you know that there's people sacrificing their descendants to this demon, and you don't kill that? Okay, so now you're going to be cut off. God does not play. This is wicked. It's so wicked. It's like spitting in God's face. God gives you a child and you murder the baby and sacrifice it to a demon. Straight sorcery. It's so it's so wicked. Jeremiah 32 um this is, is it 32 to 35? I got to get the chapter, but I'll put it in the down below. But because of all evil of the children of Israel and the children of Judah, which have done to provoke me to anger, they, their kings, their princes, their priests, their prophets, and the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and they have turned 
to me the back, not the face. Though I taught them, raising up or rising up early and teaching them, yet they did not listen to me and receive my instruction. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name and defiled it. And they built high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom. And they caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire to Molech, which I did not command them, nor did it come to my mind that they shall do this abomination and cause is, uh, Judah to sin. So God is saying, he didn't command you to do this. He did not command you to sacrifice your child. When did God ever say, kill your children? He didn't. So any Christian that think that abortion is okay, we just read that it's not. Nor did it come, did it, this evil, wicked thing come to God's mind. It didn't come to his mind. He didn't even think of something so wicked. There is no way God would ever think of something so wicked. It's not of God, it's of Satan. So that's how you know you should not abort a child. Let's look at Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in a womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I adorned you a prophet to the nations. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought it wasn't a baby. It's just a clump of cells. Before I started to form you in the womb, I knew you. Tells me that there's life. There's life. There is life. So, I don't want to hear, it's not a baby at this amount of time. It is. Because... God said before I even formed you in the womb I knew you that means that you're that child is already special to God already special they have a purpose and when you take God's purpose God's plan and you destroy it you just disobeyed God you you committed adultery against God. It's wicked. You just worship the devil. You serve the devil. Um, Psalm 139, 13 through 16. For I formed you in my inward parts. You covered me. For you formed me. You formed my inward parts. Sorry. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and your book they were all written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Mm. This is proof that there's a child inside of you. Mm, mm, mm. Psalm 127.3, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. No child is a mistake. I don't care how they come into this world, through rape, through fornication. Um, God sees the fruit of the womb as a reward. So any child that is forming inside of you is a reward from God is from God it's children are heritage are a heritage from the Lord every child is from the Lord they are they are innocent it's beautiful to him doesn't matter how they came into this world doesn't matter they have the right to be here and we, as women, do not have the right to terminate a pregnancy. I'm not talking about for medical reasons. This is not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about just, oops, I got pregnant because I decided to fornicate and do something I shouldn't have been doing and got pregnant. Now you're pregnant, the body does not belong to you. But your body don't belong to you anyway. It belongs to God anyway. But people choose to do what they want and disobey God, 
but that life inside of you belongs to God. And that's not fair that you cut that life short. There's nothing worse than killing an innocent life. Proverbs 6, 17, things that God hates, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. When you abort a child, you're not going to walk away free. You will not walk away free. In fact, many women have a lot of mental torment and depression after an abortion. And guys, you're not free from it either. Because if you, you, you made the child too, you're not going to be free. I would hate to be before God on judgment day, knowing I killed innocent life. Cause there's women out here that just do this freely. They get abortions like it's taking vitamins. No joke. I've seen it <laughs> working where I worked and I hear about it. And there's a lot of women that glorify it. Like, oh, I'll just pop a pill and get rid of this thing. It's not a thing. It's a human being and it's God's creation. And God has a plan for each and every one of us. And who are we to take that away? Who are we? We are not God. Oh, that's what you're doing when you commit abortion, playing God. God gave you that life. That child is God's child. And y'all need to stop playing around with the enemy, acting like things are no big deal. Because demons love that. It's, 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 it's when you murder a child, it's giving glory to the devil. That's all it's doing. That Molech that we talked about, that demon loves abortion, loves it. You just glorify him. And don't think that you won't get a demon from doing that. Opening up, you're gonna open up a door to demons when you abort a baby. I don't know what spirit will come in, but just know you will open up a door to both the mom and the dad that decided to kill the child. You open up the door to demons. In the spiritual realm, it's fair game. When you sin like that, it's fair game. Demons come in and out of your life now. You just open the door. So who knows what you'll get? You might get depression. You might get a murder spirit because you just murdered a baby. I don't know what you were going to get, but you definitely open the door. So you need to repent. I'm not condemning anyone. I'm not shaming anyone. I'm telling you the truth about abortion. It is wicked. So you must repent. If you had an abortion, Christ will forgive you. God will wash away all your sins, but you have to repent and turn from your wicked ways. Okay? You have to. Psalm 82, 3 through 4, it says, Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Free them from the hands of the wicked. Listen, there's also that excuse of, Oh, the father doesn't want to take care of the child. I don't have any resources. God got your back. I'm a single mom too. I understand. God has my back. God always provides for me and my child. Always. Don't worry about that. Have the baby. Don't murder the baby. That baby is a gift from the Lord and God will bless you and take care of you. The devil's going to give you thoughts like that. Oh, you can't take care of the baby. You don't have the resources, the funds. You don't have this. You don't have that. It's lies from Satan. Satan lies to you. That baby will be blessed. God will take care of you. I promise. Just repent. Turn from your evil ways. Turn to God. He will take care of everything. I promise you. You think I was a saint my whole life? No. I still make mistakes. and I, But I had to repent and give my life to Christ. You have to do it. He'll take care of you. God provides for me. I'm not even working right now. I'd rather make videos to preach the gospel, to be honest. But God always provides for me financially. God covers uh, my daughter's tuition at school. He covers food. He puts a roof over our head. We are very blessed. And I'm doing this by myself. But yet, I'm not by myself because I have Christ. 
I'm telling you, you are not alone. I hope I'm speaking to someone who's contemplating about getting an abortion. Do not do it. Please don't do it. Don't do it. God will protect you. And even if you just don't want to take care of a baby, don't kill the baby. There's options. There's options. There's always people willing to adopt. Always. Just don't murder the baby. There is a plan that God has for your child. There is such a plan. All children are a gift from God. And we must do everything to protect them. They are our future. But most importantly, they're the most helpless. The baby doesn't have a voice. You have women out here chanting, my body, my choice. What about the baby? They don't even have a say so. That's not fair. They're living, breathing, and they feel everything. When you go into that abortion clinic, they're going to feel it. It's so sad. It's so sad. It's so wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked. It's wicked to have an abortion. Okay? I just want to pray for everybody that is listening. Um, There may be people, like I said, on here debating on if they should get an abortion or not. And I pray that this helps. Heavenly Father, I thank you for um, all of my listeners right now, Lord. I just pray if there's anyone thinking about having an abortion, Lord, that you will convict them. The Holy Spirit will come and convict them. I pray that this video will convict them, Lord. And to those who already had an abortion, Lord, I pray that... Um, you would lead them to repentance and that they will turn away from their sin and that you will wash them clean of their sins, that there will be no condemnation, Lord. And I pray that you would just help them along the process, the healing process, because there's always going to be mental torment after. And I pray that you will help them heal, help them heal mentally and just feed them your word, Lord. And I pray this prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you for listening. I hope that this helped you to shine some light on abortion and the um, evil. It's so evil. It's so evil. It's it's honestly, it makes me cry um, to see people marching in the streets for this, to see pictures and videos of dead babies. It's so wicked. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart, but imagine what it does to God because this is his creation. It's so sad. Um, if you want more videos like this, just exposing to true, make sh- the truth, make sure that you like, share, comment below, um, share this video with people, um, and you know, just shine the light on this. We have to shine light. We have to expose darkness as Christians. That is our job. And that's all I'm here to do. Just expose, not condemning anyone here. Um, this is a safe place. I just want to shine truth on the matter. I thank you for tuning in. God bless you all until next time. See you later.